yes, I, I will be happy to introduce uh, Lucas uh, Valirak. I don't know if the pronunciation is correct. He's a senior researcher in, in laboratory of gene expression at the Institute of Biotechnology of the Czech Academy, Academy of Science. And he received his PhD at the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague, in the Czech Republic, and worked as an intern in Denmark, Denmark and Sweden. His long-term interest is analysis of single, uh, uh, single cell gene expression using RNA sequencing and uh, uh, RT-QPCR. Uh, he is active in method development and implementation, and his primary research focus is on real cells and their role under pathophysiological condition. And he is involved in the project focused on the analysis of experimental ischemic stroke and spinal cord injury, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and Alexander disease. And uh, he, he is here to present a, 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 a very important topic that is a talk on the spatiotemporal dynamics of ischemic brain injury resolved at single cell level. So I give you the word, Lucas. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for very nice introductions and very comprehensive introductions. Uh, I would like to also thank the organizers for the invitations and for the possibility to present here our data. So um, uh, today I would like to show you some of our very recent and unpublished data, which we got in our recent projects, which is focused on ischemic brain injury and where we apply the single cell RNA-seq, but also the, the, the spatial transcriptomics. So I would like to start with just very short introduction. So ischemic brain injury uh, is basically critical reductions of blood flow into the brain and, and its blockage basically causes very severe neurological deficit. On the, on the, on the molecular level, so these pathological changes uh, include energy depletion, calcium overload, a massive inflammatory response, and many other processes. And basically all these uh, changes are somehow detrimental to the basic cells functions and ultimately leads to, to cell deaths. Uh, ischemic brain injury is really a major problem. Every year over 12 million people uh, die uh, worldwide. So it's a, it's, a, it's a major healthcare and economical problem. Uh, therefore, there is also quite substantial uh, demand on the development of new neuroprotective strategies. But despite that there was like over thousand of drugs tested, uh, uh, over, 100, uh, over hundreds of uh, clinical trials performed, early clot glysis basically remains the, the, the only approved therapy now. Uh, what are the reasons for this transactional block? So the main problem is that, that the disease is, is really complex. Uh, it involves like interactions of many cell types. Brain is a very complex organ. So all of these cell types could somehow like contribute to the pathology of the disease. Uh, the complexity is even like increased by existence of, of, of cell type heterogeneity, which, which even increase the number of possible interactions. And also like temporal and spatial factors are, are quite crucial factors, meaning that uh, a given subpopulation of cells could have beneficial but also detrimental functions based on its like spatial positions, but uh, also based on when this uh, subpopulation is treated, for example. And uh, another problem is also that not all the experimental models reflect the, 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 the human biologically so faithfully. So this, uh, the, the existence of this heterogeneity is of course like a great uh, opportunity to, to, to apply current technologies for the transcriptomics analysis, meaning mainly the single cell RNA-seq, but also like spatial transcriptomics is quite a new technique which uh, with, with very promising like uh, um, results or uh, 
insight into the pathology. And as these all technologies has uh, their pros and cons, so it's very nice to integrate the power of each of them with the with the integrative analysis. So that's something which uh, which we which we did and which we are also like planning to do uh, in our research. Uh, so that was like uh, introductions about the disease. Now a little bit about the biology. So as has been nicely introduced, our main interests are in glia cells. Uh, those cells are major players in the response to ischemic brain injury. They contribute to many different processes, but, but probably the major ones are neuroinflammations, uh, restrictions of the injury sites, and then also they contribute to, to recovery processes. As I have already mentioned, they could have beneficial but as well detrimental effects during the stroke uh, depends on the on the on the temporal or spatial uh, uh, aspects, etc. And uh, what is now known that there's a, there is a high level of the heterogeneity. So just to illustrate the level of the heterogeneity using a few of the glia cell types. So here I selected the microglia. Uh, I believe that most of you know microglia are the immune cells of the of the brain. Uh, for quite for a long time, it uh, it uh, it is well known that or it it was uh, believed that they could exist in 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 two let's say phenotypes which were assigned as M1 and M2. One was pro-inflammatory, the second was anti-inflammatory. However, uh, the latest work kind of like uh, rebelled this uh, this model because it, it was shown that there exist many more specific subpopulations. One of the seminal work was published by, by Edo Ahmed in 2017, I believe, when they described something which they call disease-associated microglia. So I don't know if you can hear it nicely on the, on the picture on the right side. But these disease-associated microglia are actually just a very small proportions of the populations of all microglia, but they could have very, very important functions in the, in, in the pathology, in this case, Alzheimer disease, and they could be also targeted. Uh, and the, and the follow-up work basically uh, discovered much more different subtypes which have like different functions which could be beneficial detrimental based on the uh, base uh, based on the disease context so uh, for the microglia uh, the current situation is that there is belief that there are like at least five different subpopulations which could be somehow manipulated in in diseases similar situation is in the astrocytes there was also like uh, this belief that there are like two phenotypes which uh, with the analogy to the uh, microglia were, uh, were uh, labeled as, as A1 and A2 astrocytes. One was the, was the good, uh, good guys, the second was the bad guys. Uh, but that was also like uh, oversimplified uh, um, model and now it's, uh, it's clear that there are much more subpopulations, 2020 disease-associated astrocytes were described, and a very recent pre preprint from the uh, August this year uh, uh, characterized new uh, states of astrocytes called inflammatory reactive astrocytes 1 and 2. And uh, lastly, oligodendroglial lineage. So uh, these cells are pretty uh, heterogeneous already, like by default, I would say, because there exist many different maturation stages in the brain. Also, the major oligodendrocytes could be divided in several classes. Uh, but these different classes could also like react different to the disease. So this was very nicely described in the context of multiple sclerosis, when the oligodendrocytes play quite a crucial role, but also in the context of the injury. So as you, as you saw, so uh, uh, the heterogeneity of glycel is quite rich, but it was mostly described in the neurodegenerative context. 
Uh, what is also important to tell that the, the, the disease associated subpopulations of different cell types uh, may share transcriptional program and could actively communicate. This was very nicely uh, described in the context of the Alzheimer's disease when uh, there was described like different subpopulations of different uh, glia cells, which basically uh, communicate and could be like correlated with the different pathological traits, for example, with the cognitive decline, with the uh, beta amyloid accumulation, etc. And because uh, these disease associated subpopulations share some transcriptional programs, so this may be also therapeutically targeted. And it has been also like already published very nice work when basically the researcher identify the, the shared program of these disease-associated microglia and disease-associated astrocytes, and basically the, the key proteins in their regulation network were targeted by, uh, by, by drugs, which are already on the market, and using the retrospective study, they, uh, they show very nice, like, uh, 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 let's say, efficiency to, to decrease uh, the, 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 the chance uh, for developing of Alzheimer's disease. So uh, this was all about the neurodegenerations, let's say. But what is interesting or and what's the opportunity that very little is known about, about uh, reactions of these disease-associated subpopulations in the ischemic brain injury. And that could be, uh, of course, like very promising target for, for new, new therapies. Uh, so that was a kind of like literature overview and also like our kind of like uh, uh, knowledge base, which we, uh, on what we built our hypothesis, but we also had some quite a nice uh, data. Uh, last year, we published uh, a transcriptomic analysis of the of the stroke in young and age, age mouse brain. We basically saw that the response is quite similar, but differs in magnitude. And one of the major differences was basically the upregulations of type one interferon signalings, uh, for which were mainly responsible glia cells, and. Uh, uh, when we look on the gene signature, which was characterized by this uh, uh, increase in the interferon signaling, we saw like very strong overlap with one of the disease subpopulations of microglia called interferon responsive microglia, which were described in the context of the Alzheimer disease. So uh, we we look deeper on this on this like uh, gene signature of the interferon responsive microglia in a, in a, in a time series experiment, experiment using the bulk RNA-seq data. And we saw clear increase in the expression with the peak in the day three, let's say. And what is like the most interesting uh, point is that uh, the manipulation of this inflammatory response, which could be assigned to this particular subpopulation of the interferon responsive microglia, uh, microglia could be could be targeted and could improve re regeneration after experimental model of the stroke. So there are like uh, several examples of such studies. I selected this one because they kind of like uh, used also the data uh, obtained in our study. So uh, based on these like data and the hypothesis, we decided to conduct the, the single cell transcriptomic study in the, in, the, in, the, in the experimental model of the stroke and try basically to identify all these uh, subpopulations which are known in the context of the neurodegener neurodegeneration, look how they communicate to each other, using the spatial transcriptomics also to look at the, their positions and then potentially uh, use them as a target for, for new therapies. So as a model, we use the permanent middle cerebral artery occlusions. So that's a model when you occlude one of the major artery in the brain, which is here highlighted in these uh, red frames. 
uh, uh, we we did it in a in a in a in a mouse. Uh, uh, this 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 mo uh, this model is quite reproducible. Uh, it has quite like uh, uh, it it could generate like uh, lesions of different sizes, which we could uh, nicely monitor by the MRA. Uh, here is also like the picture from the immunochemistry when you can see that the that the uh, lesion size is quite large. And here you can already see the importance of the glial cells in, in these processes. Here, microglia were, were, were uh, labeled uh, with uh, or are uh, seen in green and astrocytes in red. So you can see how they are actually accumulated ar around the lesion site. So, and as I have already mentioned, we use the spatial transcriptomics, single nucleus RNA seq, and bulk RNA seq. And basically, we wanted to combine uh, the power of each of these modalities. Spatial transcriptomics, uh, you have the, the basically complete transcriptome, you have the spatial positions, but you don't have single cell resolution. Single cell nucleus, RNA-seq. Uh, the reason why we use the single nucleus RNA-seq is was that we wanted to capture all the cell types, including neurons, which is sometimes difficult to analyze because they are quite sensitive to the dissociation procedure. And we also use the bulk RNA-seq because the single cell uh, or single nucleus RNA-seq is pretty like uh, have high uh, resolutions, but unfortunately it's also quite expensive and it's difficult to analyze like more replicates, uh, like uh, more detailed time series, etc. So that uh, uh, this part we did with the bulk RNA-seq but because we, we, we could combine these modalities so we could actually estimate the cell type proportions in the bulk RNA-seq data with the, with the process which is called deconvolution. So, uh, so spatial transcriptomics, I don't know if all the in the audience are, are, are familiar with the technology, so just very briefly to introduce the technology. So basically you can measure the, the the transcriptome in the in the in the slice of tissue. In our case, it was the hemisphere of the mouse brain affected by the uh, by the stroke. You basically put this slide on the uh, glass slide where are pre-spotted oligonucleotides, uh, which are used to initiate the reverse transcription. And each of these spot has uh, these oligonucleotides contain spatial or specific spatial barcodes, which could be then used in the bioinformatical uh, analysis to identify transcripts from the given spot. So this way you can basically get the information about the whole transcriptome uh, with the spatial localization. So this is the, the early look on the, on the data. So for those of you who are not familiar with such analysis, so basically here we look at the uh, dimension reduction technique called UMAP and, and this like uh, re reduced space. Uh, the spots in this case are clustered based on their similarity. So if the spots share the similar expression profile, they clustered together. If they are different, they uh, they uh, they clustered in different uh, um, clusters. So uh, uh, immediately you can see that some of the clusters are basically composed uh, as a mix of uh, uh, spots from different uh, stages of the of the disease or ischemic stroke, while some are composed only, for example, from spots from D1, D3, or D7 after the injury. So when we annotated these spots uh, using the Allen Brain Atlas as a reference, so we could uh, clearly identify spots, spots which corresponded to, to different brain, brain regions, for example, thalamus, amygdala, cortex, etc. But we also like uh, detected three unique clusters, which we call lesion, receding lesions, and the healing lesions. So basically, those spots were under the lesions, and we could immediately here see that they are quite different, and they quite of like develop in a in a time. So we can also like put these spots on the on on their original positions. 
So here you can see the clustering uh, visualized on the slices of the brain. So you can see the different brain regions, but you can also uh, can see the, the different stages of the development of the lesion actually. So the lesion, receding lesions, and the healing lesion in day seven. So we can repeat and adjust this analysis. So for example, here we, we, we use a little bit like a higher resolution, meaning that we just uh, take the spots which we believe that could be affected by the, by, uh, by, by the injury and cluster it again using like a little bit uh, finer uh, clustering uh, settings. So uh, basically, we, we, we got very similar data as in the previous analysis, but in the day one, we suddenly saw like two different regions in the, in the lesion site, uh, ischemic core and penumbra, and that's very, very well described in the context of the ischemia that there are such zones. So it, uh, it, uh, it, it makes like biological sense. And of course that we can like, repeat this analysis and uh, get even deeper resolutions, which we are currently doing. So when we have like uh, these like initial clustering, so of course that we wanted to know what are the marker genes of these different uh, regions, uh, particularly of the lesion size. So we use two different approaches. We basically, uh, first calculated the markers of each clusters as is the as is performed classically in single cell rna seq but we also like calculate the differential expression using the spatial position uh, using these two different approaches we got approximately 600 genes which were shared between uh, those markers and uh, uh, using quite a simple analysis, these, uh, these, uh, these overlaps, we were suddenly like able to identify genes which are expressed like uh, just in one part of the brain or one part of the lesions, for example, healing lesion or penumbra, or which are shared by, by different, uh, different regions. So that's something which we are currently investigate but already from this analysis, it was clear that most of the differential expressed genes are somehow expressed in uh, zones, which of course makes sense considering the, the, uh, the biology we are studying. And some of these uh, genes could be also assigned to some cell types based on the previous uh, knowledge. So here are just a few examples how we can then like visualize genes which we believe are primarily expressed by, by, by different cell types. So here it's, for example, uh, astrocytes, which basically enclose the lesions. Here we have like genes, which we believe is expressed by microglia, which uh, form uh, active immune uh, defense. And also like, for example, neurons, which basically only task is to survive this, this, this huge, uh, huge uh, like pathological event. So that was the spatial transcriptomics, but spatial transcriptomic, uh, transcriptomic doesn't have the single cell resolutions. So to get the single cell resolutions, we basically generated also the single nucleus RNA-seq data. Uh, we captured the major cell populations, but uh, we have shortly commented neurons there. We, we didn't see any major like uh, effects, but that could be cause that uh, maybe we didn't have like enough cells to detect some, some uh, neuro regeneration or something or our early, or our time points so, are so early to detect such, such changes. But anyway, we are more interested in the glia cells. So we look at them in the detail. So here are just few few like interesting topics which we are currently like following and which we believe could be pretty interesting. Uh, so uh, first, we clearly see that there are some like regional re regional heterogeneity of astrocytes, which is currently quite like uh, actively investigated. There are several like very current paper describing this regional heterogeneity. We we also like saw that these reactive astrocytes, which we uh, detected in the data, are primarily generated from these telencephalic astrocytes, which also makes sense. 
uh, we also like uh, detected or uh, detected some cells with the with the with the uh, potential neurogenic potential, which is like something which is also now uh, very actively discussed in the field, and we would like to more follow on this as well. And uh, because now I'm uh, the, uh, the 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 title cell uh, tells astro side, but it is more like astro ependymal lineage. So uh, just to illustrate how the spatial transcriptomics is actually like very, very valuable informations. For example, we, we had this like very small clusters uh, of, of gray cells, which we were not sure what was the cell type identity, but when we visualized the markers of these cells, so we immediately saw where, where they are localized and that they are probably the choroid plexus epithelial cells, which then confirmed uh, the other markers as well. So with the oligomer Lucas, effect, excuse right? me, um, we're running out of time, if you can. Yeah, I, 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 I will do it quickly. So for oligonodrocytes, we were quite surprised. We got like two new subpopulations, which is which are not described in the literature. We will like follow this uh, as well. Uh, again, example of their spatial localization, microglia that was like little our uh, that was not what we expected. We got like a low number of nuclei. But even though uh, we, we were able to identify the trauma-associated microglia, which were described in the context of the spinal cord injury, we, we kind of like saw their increase in the number over time. We were interested in the interferon-responsive microglia, which we did not detect it because probably we, we did not have like enough number of the nuclei. But because we had the spatial transcriptomic data, we could look at the markers of the subpopulations known from the literature and again, like nicely identify that they are probably uh, present there. And last two like slides with the with the with the with the results. So actually, we want to integrate uh, these two modalities. And one of the like first analyses is that we basically try to estimate the proportions of these uh, cell subtypes in each spot. So now you can, for example, see that uh, uh, the the scale on the right is the proportion of this particular cell type and a spot. So these are homeostatic microglia, uh, which are uh, homogeneously distributed over the slice. But these are the trauma associated microglia, which are like mostly presented in the, in the lesion site and basically like uh, uh, creates most of the cell types presented in the lesion. So with that, I would like to conclude. So uh, we have like lots of stuff to do before us. So for sure, we want to get more robust data. So we will do, uh, or we have already done, but not analyzed yet. Uh, the, the new single cell RNA seq of astrocytes, microglia, and oligodendrocytes. This time we will focus on these cell types. We have many ideas what to do with the spatial analysis. We would like to combine these two modalities. So you, uh, look at the cell-cell communication analysis, but with the spatial information, use the deconvolution, which I've already mentioned. And all these like work should, uh, should, should lead us to, to identification of the target for therapeutic intervention, which we would like to find. So uh, I would like to thank you all the people who, who, who contributed to this work, especially uh, Pavel, Abafe, Daniel, Zucha, and Denisa Kurdeva, and thank you for the grant support, and thank you for your, uh, for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions.